So looking at the Tantric texts, the Shiva Samhita. So in chapter two, it starts to bring in the concept, doesn't directly call it Soma or Agni, um, but we can see exactly how they match up. Um, so in this body, which is called Brahmanda, there is the nectar rayed moon in its proper place on the top of the spinal cord. This has its face downwards and rains nectar day and night. The ambrosia further subdivides itself into two subtle parts. One of these, through the channel named Ida, goes over the body to nourish it, like the waters of the heavenly Ganges. Certainly this ambrosia nourishes the whole body through the channel of Ida. This milky ray moon is on the left side. The other ray, brilliant as the purest milk and fountain of great joy, enters through the middle path called Shushumna into the spinal cord in order to create this moon. So as we're hearing that this, this soma nectar is dripping down. And then on the other side, we've got the, the Agni. So at the bottom of the Maru, there is the sun. In the right, oops, sorry, in the right side path, the Pingala, the Lord of Creatures carries the fluid through its rays upwards. It certainly swallows the vital secretions and ray excluded nectar. Together with the atmosphere, the sun moves through the whole body. The right side vessel, which is the Pingala, is another form of the sun and is the giver of Nirvana. The Lord of creation and destruction moves in this vessel through auspicious ecliptical signs. So as you see, you, you even hear the destruction of the sun, the, the fire. Um, but as they say there, it's also a necessary. So we need these two.